Welcome. Welcome. I never really know what I'm going to say when one of these meetings occurs. <clears throat> We've been meeting together, a lot of us, for a long time now, years. Fourteen years this month since Papaji sent me to meet you and to offer to you what he offered to me. And really, the fact that I never exactly know what I'm going to say is the essence of the teaching. <laughs> because if, if what I have to say could be memorized or put on note cards or remembered, then it's not really the teaching. It's not really what's offered. I'm playing the role of the teacher here. And you're playing the role of the student in this moment. Or maybe the anti-student who's in the room with a teacher, a so-called teacher. So that, there's that spectrum. <laughs> Those are roles we play. And we all of us play many roles in our lives. <clears throat> Roles of parent, or roles of child, lover, friend, husband, wife, worker, quitter, victorious one, defeated one, sick one, healthy one, living one, dying one, and many, many small subtext. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the play. We are in this multidimensional, extraordinary, awesome play. So that's what our point is here today. To first recognize that there are a multitude of roles, many seconds of roles, that have all been conditioned and digested to such a degree that they're unconscious. They just seem to be who you are. But if there's a willingness to recognize everything that you do, if you have any idea <laughs> of how to do that, or even what that is you are doing in the moment, it's coming from something past, which can be quite useful, obviously. You don't need to relearn the alphabet every time you write a word or relearn your multiplication tables, or relearn how to drive, or relearn how to work a computer. It's very useful. The only problem with it is if you believe the roles to be the truth of who you are. Then when you are playing the role of sick person, or you're playing the role of healthy person, you make an evaluation about who you are on the role, based on the role. I'm a healthy person, I'm good. I'm a sick person, I'm bad. Or the world's bad, or the world's good. If you can recognize it, it's all a role. A multidimensional, exquisite, mysterious, cosmic, mundane, transcendent, profane totality of theater. We can call it divine theater. Then there is the opportunity, the possibility, the space to recognize what is present in all roles. What doesn't move as the movement of play occurs? What is the truth of who you are? And my teacher asked me 
to stop everything when I met him. And it took me some time to even get what he was talking about. I thought he meant stop moving. It was a much deeper request. Stop everything. What he was saying is stop every role you are playing. And the role I was playing then was the very intent seeker role. I am seeking enlightenment. And that's a beautiful role. That's an exquisite role. It's a mysterious role when you're asked to play that role. And maybe you even fight with it. Not you. I mean, it's a weird role to most people in the world. It's not a normal role. But somehow, everyone in this room, to some degree, was asked to play that. So I recognized the beauty of it, and I had actually gotten quite good at perfecting it. I knew the clothes to wear, I knew the demeanor to put on, I knew the uh, words to say, I knew my meditations, I knew my failures in it, I knew my successes in it, and I was seeking more information about the role. And so I went to a Master of Enlightenment, thinking he would give me more information so I could be the enlightened one or the supreme seeker of the enlightened one. <laughs> always happy, always giving out beauty and love. It sounds good, it's like, you know. The understudy, the brilliant understudy that one day will be called to play the role. And he told me to stop everything. And when it finally sunk in, he means everything. Really, everything. Then there was a point of meeting. A point where our eyes met, where our minds were open to one another, where our hearts were beating in love where there was nothing in the way of one-to-one. -one. One self to one another. And what occurs in a true meeting where there is no conception of what is occurring is the truth of who you are. It is an exquisite experience. And the tendency is to try to capture that experience and to hold it. But my teacher said, stop everything, even that. Don't hold this. Don't hold that. Don't keep this. Don't keep that away. Don't be this. Don't be that. Just be. And I thought that meant retreat to India, live at his feet, never play any of my other roles again. And he told me to stop that also, as he put me on a plane. Back to you. <laughs> and invited me to play this role. Not to play it 24 hours a day, <laughs> just to play it when it occurs. And to always tell the truth in the playing of who one is. So that is the essence of the teaching. The play of the teaching is discovering how it is we conceptualize what it is we are looking for, what it is we love, what it is we know to be true. And those are our conversations. Those are our dances together. Those are our words. Those are our roles. When you receive the 
transmission of this teaching, however you receive it, through a look, through a word, through a TV screen, through nature, the mystery of no event occurring, it doesn't matter. Whenever you receive the transmission, at that point, there is choice in your life. Before that, there's no choice. It's all just mechanical play, robots playing. But at that point, there is choice. Not choice based on I know, but choice based on I don't know. I don't know. Not I know that I don't know. <laughs> That's too much. That's another role. A deeper, truer, more alive, I don't know. Which then led into the second part of his teaching, which was wait and see. <laughs> Stop, wait and see. Very simple, endless. Of course, it requires an enormous amount of trust. Because all that we think we are, all the roles we have played or we have seen played in, in our parents or our leaders or our teachers or our advertisements or movies or all that we have put into ourselves, all that we have said, no, never that. We all sense that that's there. And the fear is that if we wait and see, what we will see will be very bad news. Because we've played the role of being nice and wonderful and lovely, but we know inside there's a wretched, horrible, ugly, mean, spirited person who does selfish, greedy, <laughs> lustful things. Not like everybody else. <laughs> Or the reverse, depending on if you're inflated with yourself, then you think everybody else does that, not like you. <laughs> Any of those in here? Because <laughs> generally, I'm speaking to people who have learned to be humble, and in that have learned to hate themselves for their arrogance, or for their parts of themselves that slip by the humility. So it requires a huge amount of trust, a leap into not knowing. And I'm here to tell you that it <clears throat> is very good news. As my teacher's presence was telling me, it's very good news. As Ramana's presence, as the moment of not knowing, your own presence is saying, this is good news if in not knowing, you're not seeking to know, if you stop. Okay, as for all the people I've never met before, are there any in here, <clears throat> if I've never met you before? And it's also for all the people that I have met who think they know what I'm saying. <laughs> And it's for me, because it's my joy to come here naked of knowing what to say and trusting that I don't need to know. That the role itself was given for a specific purpose. And that purpose is the awakening of all being. And that if the mind surrenders to that, then the mind is used in a way I don't need to know. And that's what I invite you to.